Hi everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the May 2018 My Monthly Hero Arts Card Kit. Yes, I know, I'm a little late. I'm catching up though. So you get this awesome stamp set, you get a beautiful stencil, which uh, of course I had trouble with because it's me. Some great watercolor paper that's very thick, it's like 140 pound I believe. You get those organic leaves and some washi tape. So let's jump right in on the first five cards. So I pulled out my Delusions Shimmer Sprays. I needed to give them some love. Haven't used them in so long. Bought them, didn't use them. So first time. So I'm, of course, also going to use that beautiful die that came with this card kit as well. And I also framed it with one of my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle, and it was the largest size. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. This is my awesome looking spray tent. And what I actually use is one of the Simon Says card kit boxes because they're awesome that way. So I have a piece of Bristol cardstock in here. And I'm going to be using Pure, sun Pure Sunshine, Bubblegum Pink, and Crushed Grape. Um, so I'm, of course I'm spreading the bottom with the yellow, the middle with the pink. And then I'm coming in on the top with the purple. Now, I probably should have left it like that, but you all know me. I can't leave things well enough alone. So I'm going to add some water to this just to get the colors going. Shouldn't have added that much, especially when the piece was curling. But that's okay. It's actually still there, even though it doesn't look it. I did use my heat gun. Um, not the Ranger heat gun, but I did use my regular heat gun to dry this because it's just saturated at that point. Um, and I was impatient. Let's be real. So you can see with these shimmer powders, they have some gorgeous, uh, there's like mica flakes in there. So if you do have these, you want to make sure that you really shake them. If you're shaking them and they're that metal ball inside, you're not hearing it. You need to keep shaking it. It's lodged up somewhere into that container ask me how i know so they're beautiful and what's nice is they do come in a smaller size which is at a great price point as well of course all the products i use will be linked down below so i'm using uh that new thermoweb i finally got a hold of one of those and wow i can see why they're never in stock it's really good um but i'm going to put this on top of my color panel okay back to the guard and I'm going to offset it because I wanted some of the pink towards the top and the orange um, and the yellow that formed along the bottom. And I'm going, and of course we're already inky, so it's a good start. I'm using the sentiment Happy Thoughts because you all know I just love that sentiment or happy everything. Um, and I glued this. I did not prop it up. I put that white die cut panel straight down onto the base, the colored base. This section here, these two pieces, I will be propping up with some fun foam. And again, using my double-sided tape um, that bonds anything, which is awesome. So I pulled out some of my Jewel Nouveau drops. This is Limoncello, and the other one is Rose Water. So I thought they complemented the... Um, the dye background really well. So I'm just going to put some dots all throughout the side, but not too far out. I wanted it close to the die cut border. And we're just going to continue around the outside of it. So that's what we are looking at for the first card. I think it came out really fun. And I need to use those shimmer sprays more. So I dug into some of my Gina K dye ink pads, which I love. And yes, I got the new ones that are out. And yeah, sorry guys, I needed my stamp positioner for this. Now I've got all kinds of stamp positioners because you just can't have one and you have to have them all. The only one I don't have is the Misty. Yep, believe it or not. So you're just getting these, refle these reflections. So I apologize, although we are working on that. Yeah. The room's getting revamped. Awesome! So anyway, back to the card again. So I'm using her warm chocolate for the branches, and I'm just layering them 
just above each other and I'm just making sure that they have a good impression so I want to make sure that it's really dark so I stamped these about four times I didn't think you need to journey through that with me so edited that out I'm using one of my my favorite things wonky stitch rectangle dies and I'm gonna cut that out and then what I'm gonna do is I'm using sweet mango sweet corn grass green and then still the warm brown so I grab the two small stamp leaves from the hero arts kit and I'm doing a second generation stamping so I'm going into the brown stamping off on that piece of paper and then going on to my design panel now with the grass green I'm going straight on so I just wanted the image of the brown to be in the background of these leaves I know we are not in fall or autumn I get it we're, we're just trying to get into summer still it is 60 degrees today I'm good with that but I know a lot of people want the summer to come um I know but I just for some reason I just saw this you see a branch you see leaves you think of autumn so this is what I created here so now I'm coming in with the sweet corn and again not doing a second generation I'm checking out on the piece of paper what the color looks like I know that's not going to be the true color um, because these do dry back which is awesome um, but I just wanted to have an idea okay this is I don't need to do a second generation I want this to be the full force of the die so basically I'm just creating a, a pile of leaves here I know it's not autumn I'm sorry I'm not trying to force it in but so once we have all of that stamped I'm going to grab the sentiment and it says thank you for the beautiful moments and I'm going to stamp that down on the bottom right hand corner with my Versamark black onyx ink here's my vintage photo I've been using this a lot it's coming back to me um, and I just inked around the edges just to give it um, an edge basically I'm using that thermo web tape runner and it is that tape runner is phenomenal um, it's really good I'm very pleased with it I'd love to be able to find a gross somehow so thinking about what type of blings did it need it so I grabbed my glossy accents and I'm just going to go over some of the leaves down in the pile and then I'm going to do a few of the leaves up on the branch it's just going to give it some dimension and some texture so for the next card oh this awesome stencil yeah you can see that I've been playing with it and yeah just had a hard time with it because I'm just more of a solid st uh, stencil person um, that center part is very weak so what I did on the other side of that stencil I learned the hard way on the other side of that stencil I put repositional tape um, and that's my tape runner that I was just showing you when I was wiggling my fingers there and I put it on the other side especially in those points as I'm pointing to my screen thinking you can see me um, onto those points coming down into the trunk so that they would stay in place um, when I stencil I'm all over the place with my palette knife so I was always picking that up and ruining the image that I was trying to create so I apologize for that I'll get better with that but it was it was just a rough time so with the repositional tape and then I use painters tape on the top and the bottom what I'm doing is I'm using vintage photo evergreen bow and peacock feathers yes peacock feathers I have it written down so I'm actually just using finger sponge daubers and I'm just pushing the ink through the stencil now when you do this you want to make sure that you go in an up and down motion you don't want to swish it if that makes sense because you will pull at this stencil it doesn't look it it is very very dainty and you can see how when I'm pulling it away those points just hang in there so you can see that we've got all of that blended and I think it looks really cool so I'm gonna pull in one of my my favorite things wonky stitch rectangle die and I want to make sure that with all the work that we just did with that sponge daubing to get most of it into the picture so I do have it offset I grabbed some water and I grabbed one of my nouveau paint brushes um, they they were recently released and I really like them 
Um, I like them just as much as I like my Rangers. They're the type of watercolor brushes I have. I do have the silver, and I do have uh, some, I think they're Minkas, but they're, I, I, I cherish them. I, you know, again, I'm hoarding them, and I look at them, so they look beautiful. I use the sentiment, happy thoughts, on the card. I keep rambling and going off on a tangent. Sorry about that. I'm using some fun foam to prop this up on my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card bases. Please know that if I should not mention it, know that my card bases are always four and a quarter by five and a half. And I believe that is a typical A2 card size. Mine are always top folding. Um, I just don't do side folding cards. I don't know. It's just the way that I get my paper cut. So just, just know that in case I forget. I dug into my stickles, and I found one called Frozen that matched this perfectly. And I put little tiny dots all throughout the tray. This card was not harmed with the tapping that I did, but I do like to tap after I do my drops or these uh, stickles just to flatten them out a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed that one. That was card number three. For card number four... There's the awesome reflections again. See my setup? Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful setup. I am so glad it's changing. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm going to have so much room. Oh, this is going to be dangerous. So I'm grabbing one of the branches, and I'm just playing around with some placement um, because I'm going to be stamping using Gina Kay's white pigment ink. Her white pigment ink is one of my favorites. Um... Believe it or not, I do like the Whisper White from Stampin' Up! as well. Um, but I do stamp this a couple times just to get a, a blend going through this. I'm going to add a couple more branches just to give it a different shape um, instead of just having that one branch. I did that in the second card. So with this one, because you can actually build these branches to actually form a tree and it's great because on the back of the stamp set and I believe I show you this a little bit later you'll actually be able to see that so they actually give you the instructions to build the tray if you wanted to now it would have to be a really big card base um, but you can do that so you can see I added two on the top I added one to come down because again branches are all over I added the little girl on the swing, and I'm just using my heat gun just to dry the pigment ink. Pigment inks do take longer to dry. I grabbed my small set of Prismacolor pencils. I do. I have many sets. So this one's easy for me to grab. So I grabbed a small set of my Prismacolors, and I'm just accenting some of the white. Um, I want to put down a white base because I'm actually going to put some color onto these images, but not a lot. Um, so it's not like I'm going to be coloring with the colored pencils. I'm just adding some accent colors. Like with her dress, there is just a very faint hint of purple on her dress. With her hair, it's just a very faint line. So I just want shadows. I don't know if this is called something, I'm sure it is. I know others have probably done this, um, but it's just something that I felt I needed to do. So I'm just lightly going over the leaves in a green. No shading. There is absolutely no shading because with what I'm about to do next, you're all going to go, oh my God, why is she doing that? Trust me. Um, the tree branch, of course, is brown. And again, I still want the white there, but I just want the hint of color. To come through it. The sentiment I chose was, was singing by to say hello. I thought it was pretty fitting there. And I'm going to stamp that right in the area to the right of the little girl. I'm using my white embossing powder and I'm going over the entire image. Not just the sentiment, but the entire image. Because you can see some of the pigment ink was still wet, but it picked up the embossing powder. So it kind of gave it a really different effect. And I really like it. I don't know why, but it's just something different. I haven't torn paper in a while. So here we are. We are tearing paper. Now I'm tearing so that I'm pushing the design towards me. Because I don't, if you see the paper that's being pushed to the back, 
you have that edge. That edge I did not want on the panel. So I'm going to push the design panel forward and the piece that's getting thrown away back away from me, which will give me that effect. Here's my vintage photo. It makes many visits. It doesn't leave my table. <laughs> it just stays right there. <laughs> I'm playing around with the size of dies. I pulled a piece of pattern paper from my stash and I just thought it matched perfectly. So I cut that down using my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle die and the largest one. So it's going to be a four and a quarter by five and a half panel. I'm going to prop my craft paper up with some foam squares because I couldn't find <laughs> my, my tape. I'm then going to use my tape runner to put that down on my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. And you can see when I put that down, I like to put the top down, angle it, and then as I'm lowering it, make sure it's lining up with my bottom edge. We're never perfect, so I did have to trim, and that's okay. Just trim the edge away. That's why I have those large shears. I grabbed one of my white gel pens, and I'm just placing dots all over the panel up into the tray just to give it some oomph but I didn't want to add any glitter or anything like that so for my last one I saw these embossing enamels by Stampendous I must have them all this one is the teal so you can see these chunky gold flakes that's the enamel or excuse me, the teal is the enamel, and then you've got these gold flecks in it as well. <clears throat> Something that you have to be careful with this is don't blow on it after you put your embossing powder on. Don't flick the page after you put your embossing powder on. Again, ask me how I know, because you will lose the big flecks. Okay, so I'm taking the stencil and boldly and bravely just laying it down on a piece of cardstock and then pushing my Versamark ink through the stencil. So the first one I'm going to come in with is this the, the chunky gold and I'm just dropping it on the bottom. Again, what I just did there, it's a light tap that goes onto the paper because you will lose all of this. It's very large chunks. Now that came into a set. There's uh, pink and gold and blue and gold and all of that. And I'll be showing more of these later in another video. And here I come and see how I flicked it? Don't do that because I lost some of the gold that I had piled up down there. And when you think that you see all teal, because I'm a teal person. I love the color teal. Well, you can see from my business, it's teal and brown. Um... Even though it looks teal, there is some gold chunks in there. It, it kind of like comes to life. But you can see on the paper that this is that mixture. And there's so many others that are available. And yes, I must own them all. So they are awesome. Um, but you just have to make sure that you don't do the same things that you do as you would with your embossing powders. These are enamels. So you want to take, and it's a little difficult here because of the camera. I don't want to put my uh, heat gun in your face, but you want to heat it from the bottom. By you heating it from the bottom, you're actually getting those enamel chips to adhere. Now you can heat the entire thing from the bottom. Um, me, again, I'm impatient. So once I know that I had them adhered, I was able to bring my heat gun to the top and slowly bring it over and then it will melt. So it's not a smooth finish. It's very chunky. It's very vintage looking. It's very grunge. Um, it's very awesome. Um, I really like them. I like the effect that they give. You don't know exactly where it's going to go, but I love how this tree looks. So I'm using my largest Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle die. I'm pulling in my vintage photo again around the edges just to give it some shadow and depth. And then on a, a spare piece of cardstock that I always keep in the area, I'm going to stamp the sentiment, thinking of you. I'm using my gold embossing powder 
to heat set that. And I'm just taking away with a dry brush any stragglers um, of the embossing powder <clears throat> that are just lingering around. I'm going to heat set that. And then, of course, because the paper, I'm sorry, the paper that I used for my tray was actually a watercolor paper. Again, I love the texture of watercolor paper. But again, it's not pure white. And this is white. So we need to distress this. So I'm coming in with my scissors, scraping down the edge to break up those fibers. I'm going to heavily dye this with my vintage photo. I'm using the end of my paintbrush to curl up the edges. I couldn't find my paper bead makers. <laughs> They're buried somewhere. To roll up the edges and I'm going to come in with that ink again to really cover those as well um, so that they're, I take away that white. I'm also going to angle those scrolls. I don't want them flat on each side. I'm going to add a couple foam squares. Now, these foam squares that I'm using, by the way, I found them at the dollar store. So if you have a dollar store, sometimes check it out. They're kind of growing in their arts area or maintenance area you can find them in there too they seem to be working so far i'm pulling on the tag right now um i don't know if they're like super super strong but I mean, they're doing the job so that was our card so let's see those again so let's show them these are the close-ups of the cards that we made today i hope you enjoyed this video i do apologize on how late it's coming out and part two will be following extremely shortly so stay tuned if you did like this video, please hit the thumbs up and you see that subscribe button. If it doesn't say subscribe, make sure you hit the button so that you can see all the future videos that come out on a weekly basis. You never know what's going to hit and you never know the things that I'm going to say or come up with. So it's always interesting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I just love reading them and I love the questions that some of you guys do have. And I do really appreciate some of the feedback that you're giving me. So thank you so much. Just know that there will be a change when it comes to my videos in the next month. I Possibly a little longer. We're changing the lighting system. We're gonna change the table layout. We're gonna change the video. So it should be interesting. So you'll have to let me know how that looks as well. All the products that I used outside of this kit, as always, will be listed down below. And by all means, I always forget something. Please let me know and I will send you that link as soon as I can. I hope everyone's having a great day and enjoying their weekend. But most important, always remember, be creative.